Thank you very much, Lori. Uh, listen, welcome everybody. I appreciate uh, everybody taking the time out to to uh, look at the topic today. Uh, as Lori said, we're going to be talking about utilizing reality capture data in the tools of the product design and manufacturing collection. And primarily, uh, I'm going to be using Inventor and Navisworks a lot today. We might uh, discuss some AutoCAD issues and things like that. But um, to get started with reality capture in the in the manufacturing collection, it's important you understand that that there is no easy button. Uh, there's no button or no command that I can click that's going to automatically convert a reality capture scan into some solid model data, and that that tool just does not exist. Um, so we are going to be using some commands, some inventor commands specifically today to help us redesign or generate a new design in context of a reality capture design. Uh, some of the commands we're gonna look at today are really deep inside of Inventor and it's quite possible you've never seen those commands before. Uh, you know, a lot of people would ask, you know, why? Why isn't there an easy button that just converts reality to solid data? Well, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but reality is different than the perfect CAD world we live in. You all know if you're a CAD user, if you're an AutoCAD user, inventor, you know that you know you've got um, you've got measurements that have eight decimal places past zero of accuracy, and even more than that actually in the background. So when you draw a line that's perfectly horizontal, it's perfect. All right, when they build a building or when they build a ship or a machine. There's no way that machine's going to be as perfect as the original CAD drawing. So when you scan it and bring it into your CAD system, you have to allow for those irregularities. Um, uh, we're going to be taking a look at, with the idea that the scan is a fantastic place to start a design. Uh, if I've got to build a, a machine, it helps to be able to go get the old machine scan it, bring it in, and then build the new machine really in context of the footprint on the old machine. Maybe I can steal some of the orientation or steal some of the design aspects of the old machine and bring those forward into the new machine. But by no means am I going to click an easy button and just convert the original scan data into uh, a brand new solid model. I need you to understand there's no easy button, but cheer up because the commands we're going to look at today are not that difficult to grasp. Uh, real quickly, just to go over what we're going to be talking about today, we, of course, are going to start with Autodesk Recap. If uh, uh, you have to start there as a starting point when you're talking about using reality capture data in members of the product design manufacturing collection. But we are going to quickly jump into orientation of the scan, the refinement of the scan. Uh, we'll talk about ways to bring the scan data over to Inventor primarily today but could be AutoCAD, could be Navisworks. Um, so how do you share the data from the re, uh, recap system? And then we really wanna get into modeling. Uh, really one of the main goals that was given to me for this presentation was to spend some time in Inventor with the reality capture data and show what you go through to develop a new model based on the old scan data. Uh, so we'll talk about modeling uh, and uh, modeling workflows. And we'll talk about uh, things like spatial analysis, clearance analysis, what you can do with the scan data other than just make models out of it. As we get started, um, when I was asked to do this, uh, it was funny. Uh, this is uh, this is about the th really the third in a series of reality capture webinars I've given. And they're all centered around a class that we developed for some of our local customers. I live in Hampton, Virginia, and, and right around the corner from me is uh, Newport News Shipbuilding. Uh, Newport News Shipbuilding is one of the largest shipbuilders in the world. And an, uh, they're a major customer of mine. I, wor I work in support. I used to work there. I was a ship fitter when I started my, uh, my CAD career. Uh, there's another shipyard across the river from uh, from Hampton called Norfolk Naval Shipyard. And really within a week, both of these shipyards ask the same question. Can you come up with some training uh, as to how to bring reality capture data into Inventor and then teach us really not how to model, but how to get the, the capture data in there so that we can begin new models based on these 
reality capture scans. So we developed a class for them, and what you're gonna see today is excerpts from that particular class. Um, now, I'm gonna be dealing, a lot of the examples today are gonna be shipboard related, but if you need this class, if you need a version of the class I'm about to talk through, it, I, listen, we could take your scans, your scan data, and just bring your scan data in, substitute it for the shipbuilding scans that we have here, uh, and we can deliver the same training to you based on really what your disciplines are, or what your products are that you're trying to create. Uh, when the shipyards approached us, uh, both of them basically had the same thing. We want to work with shipboard data, but you can't come into our shipyard and scan anything. So what we did, we're very fortunate here in uh, this part of Virginia that uh, we have a big maritime uh, museum that is available to us. And at our maritime museum over in Norfolk, the USS Wisconsin is there. And the people who uh, are in the conservancy of that ship, when you come on board with a camera or a scanner, they're just really welcome and they, they let us scan anywhere we wanted. So we had almost full run of the ship. We, uh, we scanned a couple of compartments a couple of shipboard compartments. We scanned a couple of the uh, uh, turrets up by the uh, the big guns on top of the ship. So we got to go to some really amazing places and generate some pretty cool scans. And those are going to be the basis of the examples that we use uh, in today's presentation. So we're going to start off with recap. Uh, listen, there's a reason we start with recap. If you were going to use the product design manufacturing collection tools, or if you're going to use Inventor, or AutoCAD, or Navisworks, and you want to use point cloud data, then chances are you're gonna to have to take that data through recap first. Um, we use recap to set the orientation of the cloud. We use it to set the origin. We use it to align the reality to our CAD workspace. And of course, we can clean the scan up and we can transfer it into a file type that, that, is, that is valid for what we do. But uh, if you're gonna use Inventor or AutoCAD and recap is a must, the point cloud has to go into recap first and then you can translate it into Inventor or AutoCAD. If you're using the point cloud with Navisworks, then it's important to understand that Navisworks reads everything natively. So whatever that point cloud format is, you can bring it right into the application. So I'm gonna jump over into recap to start. And uh, one of the things that happened when, I, when the shipyards gave us this challenge to come up with this class and go find your own ship data. Uh, I live in a community by the, by the ocean and uh, right around beside my house, there's a big dry storage yard where some people keep their boats. Uh, I live, a, there's a marina uh, near my neighborhood. So I went back there and I saw this old beat up hulk of a ship and I thought, man, there, there's, a, there's a good scan. Let's scan that and we'll make that part of the class. So I didn't know it at the time, but this, this ship is it's called a Florida Bay Coaster. It is a houseboat, but it's also classified as a working, a small working ship. Uh, so it's an incredibly large and robust houseboat. Um, I, uh, in, in doing some research about this vessel, I came to find out that uh, Billy Joel uh, purchased the second hull of the, this is a 55 foot version. Billy Joel purchased the second hull of the 60 foot version of this particular uh, hull design. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about it as we go through, but uh, I also got a chance to talk with the, uh, the Marine engineer who designed this boat. Uh, and during my research, I called him up and asked him if he had any AutoCAD drawings for it. And he actually gave me these old hand prints of this drawing he, he designed back in the 70s. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll show you what I did with those coming up. But recap, really, recap catch, catches the raw scan. We take the scanner out in the field, we make our scan, we bring it back in. Now there might be a little translation that you have to do to get the scan into recap. That depends on what scanner you're using. Um, I used it, just in case somebody's gonna ask, I used the BLK360. So, and the workflow I used then actually brought the scan into Recap almost natively. So uh, that's what I used to create the, the scans that you're seeing here. But uh, with Recap, one of the main things we do with Recap 
is we need to set up this, the, the coordinate system in the real space so that it matches the coordinate system in our CAD space. And that's one of the main tools you use Recap for. Now I'm gonna do this fairly quickly. And uh, if you have more concerns or if you're more interested in, in, in what Recap does and how it works, then you might wanna look at some of the previous recordings that we've done uh, on this particular subject. Uh, but I'm gonna come up here and update my origin. This allows me to place the origin wherever I want it. In this case, I've already got it here. This is on the center line of the boat. I've got it set up there. Uh, I'm gonna hit um, the tab button so that I can manipulate the coordinate system. Um, in this case, I've got it already set up where I want it. So X is pointing forward and Y is pointing outboard. But um, I, could, I could adjust this if I want. If I wanted to realign X to another set of points in the scan, I absolutely can. When I like it, I can hit enter. And now this is the coordinate system for the particular scan I'm looking at. It's important you realize that um, this, the UCS or the coordinate system would be set by the very first scan that was done in the design. So before I moved it, the scan was over here in the middle of this particular scan. This was our first scan of the boat that day. So you can move the coordinate system back up in space. And the next thing you really wanna focus on is getting the design clean. You know, you don't wanna take all these points over to Inventor. You really don't wanna do that. So there's a number of ways to really quickly come in and clean up the scan. I'm just going to do a quick little boundary, a little window selection, and I'm gonna clip the outside of this uh, just to kind of, again, simulate the fact that I can get rid of points. And really, I should get rid of all of the ground planes and all of the jack stands and even this old rickety stairwell that's in the back of the boat so you can climb up on it. I should get rid of all of that uh, before I take the data over to Inventor. A recap also allows you to come in and add scan regions. So if I wanted to, I could come in and I can highlight the uh, the lower cabin, uh, the upper cabin. So Basically, if I, if I hide the upper cabin point, you can see into the upper cabin. And if I hide the lower cabin points, you can see that. So you can add layers. You can add a layer scheme into your design with Recap. And um, just like I selected the points to delete them, I can select them to place them on a region or a layer. So you can organize your cloud very easily before you send it over to your CAD system. Now, once this is done, once you have the cloud cleaned up and oriented the way you like it, then you can come over to the export tool and you can export it to a file type. Now, for this, for this session, I'm going to choose to export as an RCS file. That's a recap scan. That's a single file. So it takes all of these multiple scans that I've, that I've done and it converts them into one compact single file that I can then reference into my inventor document or my, uh, my AutoCAD document or into Navisworks. I like the idea of just handling one file instead of many. That helps me when I start to go with file management routines and things like that. Um, the fact that it's a smaller file at this point also helps with if I need to check it into a, a data management system or something along those lines. So I'm gonna cancel that. I would export this at this point to an RCS file. And then I'm ready to start really digging into the meat of our presentation today. And that's beginning to set up the model in Inventor. So I'm gonna hop over into Inventor now. And I'm gonna start uh, one of the topics that I wanna cover. Let me hop back into PowerPoint just for a minute here. One of the topics I wanna cover is some of the modeling based workflows that you're going to see today in our presentation. And these are things that you might wanna consider if you're going to adopt this idea of working with reality capture data in your CAD system. You wanna come up with a point cloud template. This, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see throughout a number of iterations what it takes to bring a point cloud into your CAD system. And you're gonna to have to get it set upright and you're gonna to wanna to refine the position uh, Recap does a fairly good job at it, but you might want to tweak it a little bit more when it gets into your CAD system. Uh, you might want to add on top of that, you might want to import some existing 2D drawings and overlay the 2D drawings and the point cloud to begin 
your modeling tools or your modeling uh, environment or modeling session. Uh, you're also, one of the main goals, you're gonna be trying to extract line data. You're gonna be trying to extract surface data. Um, so really the idea is to get a file that's ready to be used to develop the necessary lines you're gonna need to generate your final model. We're gonna go over uh, quite a bit of an example here in this one. So again, I wanted to touch the fact that I'm gonna show you some specific point cloud tools that are in Inventor. Uh, if you've never used point clouds in Inventor, you might have never needed to go look for these tools, but they are available. So Inventor does have a few point cloud tools that come in quite handy. We'll take a look at the cloud point tools and the cloud plane tools box cropping and, and the navigator. I don't really have a good example of the navigator, but I'll, I'll mention it as we go through. And then some of the workflows that we're gonna go through are gonna include 3D sketching and intersection curves. We're gonna be using splines and surface patches and doing some lofting techniques. Um, the way I figured it, if you guys could see it done in a complex design like a ship, then I think you would understand how much easier it would be if you're using you know, a typical extruded shape or a typical box shape that we would see in some classic machinery design. Now, that's why I chose the ships to be uh, the examples I, I use today. If you can do it here, you really can convert any cloud to uh, a solid model later on. So let's hop back into Inventor and I'm gonna start a new file. And I have a template that I use when I bring in point clouds. So I'm gonna to go to my point cloud template and I'll show you this template. It's, there's nothing really spectacular about this template. Uh, I've got my work point showing. Let me, um, let, me go to, let me go to my application options here and fix my colors just for a minute. Sorry about that. Let me close that. Let me start a new file again. So I'm gonna start with this point cloud template. There you go. So I just changed my background color so you can see a little bit better as to what I'm doing. So in this particular case, in this template, I have the zero, zero point showing along with the X, Y, and Z axis. I've stretched them out so that they can accommodate the size of objects that I'm likely to place into this template file. I've also taken the time to adjust uh, my coordinate system or my view cube really so that Z is in the upwards direction. That's just the way I chose to, to utilize uh, that particular aspect of the design. So in Inventor, where do you bring in point clouds? Well, you go to the Manage tab. If you go to the Manage tab, that's where you'll see the point cloud panel, and most of the point cloud commands are grayed out normally. Uh, so I'm gonna click Attach, and I'm gonna go in and grab that boat file this is boat clean. I'll bring this in. All right, so when you bring in a point cloud, I'm gonna to click to drop it off. Normally, if you're ever bringing in inventor data and you wanna place it at the origin, usually you right click place at origin. That's not the case here. You have to drop it. And then in the dialogue that appears, you can insert it at the origin. So that's really, really, that's really key, uh, you'll see in a moment. I'm gonna click OK, and you, here you see that the cloud came in, and it came in in context, well, it came in in relation to that UCS coordinate that we specified in recap. So it came in exactly as we had it set up over there. Now, you have to check it and refine it when it comes into your CAD system. Uh, recap is just not going to be perfect. Remember, you're dealing with reality, and this is an old boat, and the bulkheads inside of this boat are bent and and uh, and knuckled with time. So um, there's a good chance that this boat is, you know, askew a little bit in reality. So we need to come in and kind of refine it. So I'm gonna zoom in here and you can see I left the, the lines on and it looks like my line is going right down the middle of the keel. It's nice that I can see right through the boat, but it goes off to one side a little bit here. So I wanna refine the placement, see if I can get it a little bit better. To do that, I'm gonna go into the browser and I'm gonna right click on the point cloud here. It's in the browser. I'm gonna edit the attached data. This brings the dialog back where we dropped it in. And I wanna rotate it mine on the Z. 
So I'm going to type in, um, I think it's negative 0.4. I think might be, might, yeah, that's it. So uh, usually I'll try, you know, one degree and then I'll try half a degree and then I'll know which way to go from there. So usually it takes about two or three times to try to tweak it. Now it's never going to be perfect. Don't, don't sit here and waste all your time trying to make it exactly perfect, but it is, we can make it closer than it was in the recap file. Now we should, we absolutely should check it in this particular view as well. Uh, these aft bulkheads should be nice and vertical at that point. And we should check it from the front as well, the Z axis. Usually the scanner does an excellent job finding the Z axis. The, the, the scanners have a built-in mechanism that helps them find up very, very uh, consistently. But you know, maybe the ship was sitting in the cradle a little skew or something like that. And, and so we might need to take into account the, you know, again, the reality of the existing state of our machine or our object that we're scanning as we bring it into our system. But you want to spend some time and get it as aligned to the coordinate system as possible. So we've got that done. Uh, another thing that I like to do is I like to research the data. If I have any old drawing data around, and especially AutoCAD data, I might want to bring that in as well uh, to our overall design. So I'm going to hide half of the ship here. I'm going to show you. Here's one of those tools I mentioned, the point cloud tools inside of Inventor. I'm going to use the box crop tool. And this allows me to hide uh, a section of the boat. You basically draw a selection rectangle around, and um, I'm going to keep the uh, outside so I can toggle it whichever way. I always, I always get it backwards. I want to keep the outside in this particular case. So here's half of the boat there. And I mentioned before that when I when I was doing this class. I got a chance to call, uh, his name is Jay Benford, and uh, he was a fantastic guy. Uh, and he gave me, he literally went to his drawer, uh, to his drawing drawer, and he sent me fresh scans of his hand drawings. I don't have the actual hand drawings here. I took his hand drawings, and uh, I pulled them into AutoCAD and traced them. Uh, so I basically made my own versions of uh, his hand drawings inside of AutoCAD. Um, one of the things I want you to notice is this is a this is a very large boat. Uh, it's so large that you can take your Jeep with the gantry crane and you can lift your Jeep off of the dock and place your Jeep onto the boat so that when you go from port to port to port, when you want to drive into town, you just put your Jeep onto the dock and take off. Now, we're going to be checking that a little bit later because when I first saw that, I thought, wow, I don't know. I, I don't know that gantry crane could lift the Jeep, much less I've seen this boat, and I don't think there's enough room on the boat to hold the Jeep. But it, it shows up in a couple of different views. There's a there's a there's a dinghy that sits up on top of the Jeep. There's the footprint of the Jeep on the deck, uh, and then there is the the bilge and the uh, engine room layers that he gave me. But um, I have this AutoCAD drawing now, so I'm going to bring that into my point cloud. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use uh, on the 3D model tab, I'm going to use the import command. If you've ever done a DWG underlay, that's, that's exactly what I'm about to do here. Uh, I'm going to go and let's see. Um, I'm going to go grab my AutoCAD drawing. And I have a work plane here. I want to select that. And then I need to anchor it at the zero, zero point right there. So I just made sure when I put this together, I made sure that the, the origin in the AutoCAD drawing was the same as the origin in the point cloud. So that when I put them together, they lined up perfectly that way. You can adjust the, the drawing if you need to. I can move it a little bit up, down, left, and right to make it suit. But I think this is a fantastic place to start modeling my data. Uh, in particular with a ship, you want to divide up the ship in equal spaces. These are called frames and you see those are listed there and I can develop uh, sections of the boat and how it looks based upon, you know, that particular frame line or what particular water line I'm looking at. And I have the original AutoCAD drawing to reference just in case I need it. 
All right, let's jump back into uh, PowerPoint for a minute. And let's talk about, well, I mentioned before, several of the, the workflows that I'm about to show you. Uh, these are obscure. Some, again, if you've never seen some of these, don't worry. Uh, you just, you might have some learning to do before you start jumping in and doing 3D sketching and, and uh, using splines or lofting or surface patches and things of that nature. So keep that in mind as we go through these, these next steps. Uh, I'm going to open uh, one of the files that I developed from this one. So if you bear with me just a second. I'm going to open up my initial, it's called my initial surface patch. I, I basically saved the boat at this particular point to kind of share with you uh, what I'm doing and how I'm getting there. Um, what I've done here is I've actually traced a couple of the lines on the boat. Um, I, these are, if you look, these are where the hull kind of has a knuckle in it. So there's actually a distinct edge right through here. I'll show you how I got that in a minute. But I basically traced these edges. I trace the center line, and then I use the box crop tool to get a good cross section of what the boat looks like at that particular area. So here again, uh, going back to the manage tab and box crop, let me show you this real quick. So you can use the box crop tool to just take the cross section of the boat. And I like this cross section to be as just as thin as it possibly can be. So I'm going to use these arrows to drag it back a little bit. Try to get in there as tight as I can. And then when I look at this from a particular, uh, particular point of view, I can actually see what the hull looks like at that frame line. And I can easily come in and trace that. Now, I think I traced this with an arc, but you could use really whatever you want. And I put points here to make sure the, the, uh, the arc is consistent or coincident with the, the points there on the, on the overall edge. When you're finished cropping, you can turn that off. So if you go back up here to the point, oh, sorry, you can go up here to box crop and say uncrop. So that's another uncrop is actually another point cloud tool inside of Inventor. So you can cross section the boat anywhere you want. And then we can use something like a surface patch. Now you can develop any modeling feature you want, but uh, for hulls, I like the surface patch option. So I can take the outline, I can select all of that. I can add rails, these little guidelines. These are my rails here. So uh, I want to add this one and this one. We'll click OK. And it, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it puts a surface there. Let me thicken that for you. Just uh, we'll thicken it an absurd amount. I'm going to thicken it to where it's one inch thick. And I want to make sure it's going the right direction. There we go. Click OK. All right. Now, you guys, in our in our goal today, remember perfection is is something I'm not going to. I'm never going to attain perfection. Um, the hull, you see, I've got a couple of spaces where the hull might be poking through a little bit. I might need to go in and add some additional lines for some for some shape up here. So, but this is a very quick and down and dirty look at this overall process. So let me show you how, let me show you one way you can actually trace the hull of a ship or you can trace these complex edges and get them into your system. Um, I'm gonna use a, a specific point cloud tool in Inventor called a cloud point. Uh, and I'm gonna add some points along the hull right here. There's another there's another knuckle or another line, a distinct line of shape along the hull here. So I'm gonna grab that one for you. So um, this is just one way to do it. I'm gonna go back to the manage tab and we'll go over here to cloud point. So you have here you have cloud point and cloud plane. Uh, both of these allow you to create a point from a point cloud, a, a work point from a point cloud, or you can create a work plane from a point cloud. So they're both very, very useful. Um, but I'm gonna come here to the front and you guys, I'm gonna try to get this close, but for time's sake, this is not gonna be very perfect here. But I'm just going through, I'm hitting the space bar each time so I can select these points.
And I'm going to select one here, and then I'm going to select one right about here on the end. Now, again, if I had all the time in the world, I could zoom in there and make all these picks just as nice and pretty as you can, but there you go. Now, once I have my points in place, then I can go and start a 3D sketch. Now, a lot of us don't do 3D sketching, but uh, in 3D sketching, I can do a spline. Oops, sorry, I want to get a, I like the interpolation spline. And I'm just going to select these points, and I'm going to basically build the spline from the front of the boat to the back of the boat. Just want to make sure I get a good green snap point each time. I'll create that spline. There you go. Now, it looks good. You might realize, let me see if I can find a bad spot. Actually, this one looks pretty good. Um, you might have to come in and, and edit the spline a little bit, change its tension. Sometimes you have to relax it a little bit to get it to conform to the size of the ship. Um, if you're going to be doing this kind of work, you're going to have to learn the spline command. It's just one of the things that if you're doing this on shipbuilding data, it just goes hand in hand. You'll have to deal with that. But now once I have the line in place, let's see what we can do with that. Uh, I could generate a lofted shape. All right, it's going to be a surface. It's going to go between that line and this inside edge of the model here. All right, and click OK, and it gives me a surface there. And then I can thicken that surface. And again, I'm going to, I'll do this as a new solid body. That way there's no Boolean if, you know, data that I've got to worry about there. And I'll click OK, and now I've got the second part of the ship ready to go. Now I got a few, I got some bleed through back here. If I zoom in, it's it's not that bad, but you know, again, you guys keep in mind we're doing this is you know very, very quickly. But I hope you can see that it's actually possible to trace reality and use the lines from your reality trace to create the model necessary to do this entire project. Uh let's see. I want to show you um I'm gonna leave that method alone. Uh, at this point. So uh, just for time's sake, I want to cover some of the other aspects in our design. So I'm going to move away from, sh well, I'm going to move away from this boat example for a little bit into some other examples that you'll see um, are, that we covered in our reality capture class that we developed for those shipyards. So I'm going to hop back over into my PowerPoint. It's also possible to use the cloud simply as context for your new design. In other words, I don't want to trace the cloud, all right? I, but I basically want to drop the cloud in position so that I can model on top of it with my own new components. Um, this particular boat that we're working on, this was built in the 40s. And, you know, uh, let me show you very quickly. I'm going to hop in to recap and uh, let's open, I don't want to save that. Um, this is the scan of the, the mess, the mess hall on board the Wisconsin. This is about 16 scans and um, this is really, a, it is a museum. It's, it's, it's incredible to go on board the ship and uh, the ship was parked in Norfolk in, two, in, I think, 2001. That's when it was parked there. And nothing's been changed since then. So in the mess hall, the ice cream machines are still standing there. The, 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 peps, the uh, fountain drink machines are still here. And they have the old logos from, the old, uh, from, the, you know, from that particular time uh, almost 20 years ago. So, uh, But anyway, looking above, uh, let's go over here and let's go in one of these scan or uh, these real views. Looking above, up in the ceiling, uh, we see all kinds of HVAC ductwork. We see insulated steam pipes, uh, all kinds of structure, things like that. And this is what my shipbuilders were really keen on getting. They wanted to be able to get this information out of a compartment, redesign it inside of their modern CAD software, and then deploy that model to possibly a brand new product model for a new iteration of the ship. 
So just like we did before, it would be, you know, instead of taking the entire, you know, we took the boat out, out of the boat yard, we could come into this file and we could grab all of this HVAC ductwork and we could isolate it, export it over to its own CAD file, its own point cloud file and bring that into Inventor, which I've already done. So uh, I'm gonna start a new file here. Now I'm gonna be using the factory design utilities. I use those a lot. If you don't have those, uh, if you have Inventor in the product design collection, you have the factory utilities, you just might not have them installed. And it's just a way for me to uh, store assets, store predefined models and drag and drop them into place. And that's what I'm gonna utilize in this example. Uh, I'm gonna bring in the cloud. So um, it's nice with the factory utilities, they, they have the point cloud commands right here. So I can attach from here. I'm gonna go over to that compartment and I'm gonna grab a, just a scan file of the HVAC run. Now I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna click and drop it off at its origin point. That's really important that we all use the same origin point in, in a project like this, but really we're not gonna delve too deeply into that in today's presentation. But I'm just gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna start laying out some HVAC uh, data. Uh, with the factory design utilities, I can come in and I can I can grab my own uh, my own assets. So I've got some assets for HVAC ductwork on board ships. I'm going to grab a straight duct and I'm just going to bring it in. And now I'm not going to go into the in, in, way into depth with how the factory design utilities work. But when I bring in an asset, I have a choice as to how I want to orient it. Let me go back to my top view here. I just like looking at it from this particular view. And I'm gonna bring it in and set it up right about here. Now, again, my goal here is not to duplicate what was on board the ship uh, because, you know, back in the 40s, they might've had different vent sizes that we don't use today. Uh, or I want to use my own current library of parts and my own current standard of vent sizes. Uh, so I just want to model my vent in context of the original. That way I account for the different zones of the ship and things like that. So with an asset on the factory side, you can come in and change things like the width. I'm going to make this nine inches long and I think uh, 33 inches, 33 inches long, nine inches wide. So it'll, it'll change there and I can drag that over and place it where I want it. And hold on for a second, because I'm snapping to a point cloud. I don't, want, I don't want that. There we go. So it's roughly in place. Now, I can then bring in my assets. So here is my asset for the Y split. You'll notice with the assets, they automatically change size. So if I can now move this back a little bit. And again, I'm, I'm eyeballing it at this point. Let me bring in a section over here. I think I'm gonna make that 24 inches long. And I'll bring in a uh, rectangular uh, rectangular transition. And let's see, length on this is negative for some reason. So negative 15. and the upper width is going to be, let's make it 15 just to exaggerate it a little bit. There we go. And we'll finish up with just another straight duct real quick. We'll just drop that up here as well. If you've never seen it in 
you've ever part snap fit like this together, chances are you've never really looked at the factory utilities and what they bring to the table. Now, I'm gonna go back to this view here. And what I'm gonna do just for kind of sanity's sake, I'm gonna select this and there's a reposition tool that allows me to easily set the height of this. Remember, you know, I wanna put this basically in context of the cloud. So I wanna drop everything back in context of the cloud. So we're kind of in the envelope there, uh, the design envelope from the original design. Now for time's sake, we just can't stop and do this, but I want you to see that you know, it with these particular assets, it would not take me long to knock out a replica of this entire HVAC run, uh, given the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that I would have all the assets necessary uh, for the particular run. And what's really cool with these assets is the way they talk to each other and they pass information around. Uh, if I change the height of that transition uh, to one end being three inches, you'll notice it changes up here. And, the other duct modifies to suit, and I just have to add the register there to get that done. So it does not take long for me to duplicate what was on the original scan, but I'm duplicating it with my own modern assets, my own modern models, my own modern standards. Uh, so again, we go back to that idea of CAD versus reality. I don't necessarily want to duplicate what the reality was, I want to enhance uh, or basically trace the reality with my new modern equipment, my new modern models, standards, and so on. Here's another example of that. Let me, um, I'm gonna go to file open. Here's another project we did. This is not in the class per se, but um, let me go ahead and open this one up for you real quick. One of the first projects I worked on with Newport News Shipbuilding was uh, the fact that they took a scanner down into the bilge of an area uh, aboard a ship and they scanned a very complex piece of pipe. Um, this is not that particular design. This is a mock-up of some of the work that was done there. But the, the idea was that given the scan and the library of components that Inventor has out of the box, I should be able to come in, maybe model a few parts that are necessary or unique, and then replace certain components in the scan with parts that are in Inventor's Content Center. And that's exactly what we did. I didn't use auto route for this. I actually modeled these pumps. Uh, I think I grabbed one of the original ones from a, a tool called Bentley. But I grabbed one of those, made the model, I set it up, got it in place in context of the cloud. And then I started to just use the regular uh, pipe components that are in Inventor's Content Center to flush out the rest of the design. And again, I'm I'm not trying to duplicate the model. I'm just trying to model a new water plant based on my new models that I have inside of Inventor and the footprint of the original scan, the original water plant that we started with. So it is absolutely possible to just use the point cloud as a guide to put your new parts together. Um, I don't know if any of you play with Legos or, or, or look at the instructions on Legos, but how much does it help to see in a Lego little manual the thing put together? And if you can see the picture of what it looks like put together, then I can go find my parts and put them together in the same order. Um, think about this project for a moment, and what if I didn't have the scan? Where would I start? Uh, the scan is the perfect starting place to drop that in first and then basically uh, reverse engineer that scan with your modern uh, models and components. All right, um, skeletal design. This is another example that I certainly wanna cover with you. This is another example that's right out of the class. Uh, let me open up a file here real quick. This is a, a piece of deck structure that's on board the Wisconsin. Now, if you look, um, I've gotten rid of everything else here, so I've brought the cloud in, and then I've already gone in and traced certain elements of the cloud. And I said trace, so I just, I drew a line, got it right through the center of a couple of pieces of equipment here. 
that's all I need in Inventor to make a piece of structural steel. All I need is the center line. So I just used the scan, got it into position, traced the individual elements that I need, and now I'm ready to start my model. And in this case, I want to use the frame generator. I can go over here to the design tab and insert uh, some frame members. And I'm going to do this uh, fairly quickly here. So I'm going to take uh, these frame members here. Let me spin these upside down. Get the same one over here. There we go. And click OK. And then let me insert some of these longitudinal members. And then let me go grab a uh, let me go grab a uh, piece of flat bar here. So I'll change my type over here to flat bar. And I'm going to scroll down for the size to something that's pretty big. I'm going to go with 12 by half. So to get this particular structural steel model, all I need is the original lines that we traced from reality. Now, if we had all the time in the world, I think hopefully you guys have seen the frame generator before, but there's the trim and extend tool that allows me to uh, select a face and then I can pick members that are going to go out there and, and run into that face. There we go. So in really, you know, no time at all, I have converted, I think, fairly easily, uh, the structural model from the original scan to something new, again, based on the material that I want to use today, based on the fact that I'm welding material instead of using rivets that they used on the Wisconsin at the time. So uh, uh, using the scan as the basis of your design is an extremely efficient way for you to generate your model. Now the last thing I'm going to show you, I want to go back to that Jeep example, so I'm going to run through this fairly quickly, but I wanted to talk uh, in the PowerPoint, I wanted to talk specifically about kind of hybrid designs where you've got a scan and 3D data, you want to compare those two together for whatever reason. Yeah, you want to do a spatial analysis or you want to do a clearance analysis. But for whatever reason, you need to see your model in context of a particular point cloud. And there's, there's so many ways to get around or to do that, but Navisworks, I think, is probably the best way to do that. Uh, with Navisworks, I can easily come out. Let me grab the boat real quick. Uh, I'm going to grab the boat, the one that we used earlier. So that's the same model I brought in. And then I'm going to append to that uh, a Jeep. So if I go to my inventor data, I went out to GrabCAD and I grabbed a Jeep Wrangler. And I'm going to bring that in. I just want to see if there's actually enough room on this boat to park a Jeep on the main deck. Uh, Navisworks makes it real easy for you to manipulate geometry as it comes in. Uh, I'm going to use the item tools and I'm going to rotate. If you're going to do this, if you're going to try to do this, make sure you turn your snap on so that when you rotate, you can actually snap to 90 degrees. 
All right. And I'll move this up to the front of the boat. And I was honestly, I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it on the drawings. I, I saw it uh, in the overall design, but I was still impressed that there is plenty of room on the main deck of this ship to park a Jeep. Uh, so here I'm using Navisworks. I could do a clearance analysis. We have clash detection tools. I could do a clearance analysis and ensure, you know, how much room I have from one side of the hall to the other to park the Jeep there, things of that nature. But Navisworks is kind of, the, of a perfect environment to uh, analyze the, the scan data right alongside of my model data and see how they would compare uh, and how we can place one in context of another and see what are some of the issues that, that we're facing here. Uh, I did, uh, let's see, as far as the, the class goes, I believe that's where I wanted to finish up um, it is important that you guys understand I stayed inside of the uh, Autodesk product design manufacturing collection during the demonstration today. I know that there are other tools out there that, that make working with point clouds a whole lot easier. And I'd encourage you to dig into those. But a few of those that I, that I kind of like, I certainly, uh, I miss the Cyclone tools. Uh, having to do this manually is great, but having tools like Cyclone Register, Cyclone 3D R, things like that, that, that we could use. Um, some of these tools have mesh conversion, so they can take my point cloud scan, turn them into meshes, and then there are other tools that I could use to extract surface data from meshes. Uh, Pix4D and Recap Photo are other tools that, that can convert pictures into meshes or into point clouds. So there are other tools out there that could fit into this scenario. Uh, what you saw today doesn't have to be from a terrestrial scanner. It could be from a photogrammetry scan that you shot with a drone uh, if you wanted to do it that way. Uh, also, AutoCAD. I didn't dig into AutoCAD today. There are some AutoCAD tools, and working with point clouds in AutoCAD is absolutely possible. Um, but um, I hope you saw some stuff today that got you excited about the overall process of working with uh, point clouds inside of Inventor specifically. Uh, so um, we do have time for questions. And uh, let me pull up the queue here and see what our questions are. Hey, Rusty. Yes. I'm going to 